Hello everybody, Steffi here from The Makers. Hope you're all um, well and um, tuned in. Um, I just had to do a little bit of jiggling again um, a second ago because um, all I will say, Emma, what went wrong on Saturday went wrong again. So but this time I, I know how to, um, to fix it. So basically I've saved us from a blooper already. So that's good. Um, hopefully there won't be any others. Um, you're here today to watch how I'm making Oh yes, there is a blooper. Okay, I'm just gonna show you what today's price is <laughs> while I'm putting something else right. Hopefully none of you have met, met, um, noticed it, but today you can win yourself um, an Easter wool mix. And um, the question we would like you to answer is, um, knock, knock, what would be the first thing a chick would say as it hatches from your egg? Okay, so just get this out of the way um, straight away. And um, I've, I've corrected one of the bloopers that I've made, which nobody's noticed, right? <laughs> okay, so um, Easter eggs, that's what it's all about. A really easy, simple project. You can chill today, definitely have your cup of tea at the ready sit and relax and um, we have a little chat and I will start by checking in who is um, here today. So just, just bear with me, right? Who have we got? Um, Fanny is here. Hi Fanny. Catherine is there. Carol. Um, Diane is there. Gina. Rachel. Um, hi fluffy friends. Me and Daniel today. Can't wait. Uh, getting rather excited of course. All these eggy eggy words that are popping up. Um, Diana says, uh, good morning, Steffi, all my fluff and all my fluffy friends. Dawn is there. Um, hope we are all well. Thank you, Dawn. So, well, I'm well. Anyway, I <laughs> don't know about anybody else, but I'm well. Um, hi, everyone. Sun is shining and feeling springy. Well, do you know, the sun's not shining today where, where I am because we're in the clouds. We're a little bit higher up than everybody else. And um, I think the clouds have come up. So I don't know if it's uh, sunny down. Well, it wouldn't be down in the valley. It wouldn't be sunny down in the valley because there's clouds. But a bit higher up, it'll be sunny. Shut up, Steffi. Um, Sandra is there. Carol. Um, Diana. Eva is there. Um, I wondered when the egg jokes would start. Well, there you go, Diana. Now you know. No more wondering. Um, Catherine... <laughs> Oh, um, Catherine says to Rachel, you crack me up, Rachel. Oh, here we go. Oh, we've got somebody new. Oh, my God. Okay, now my French is going to be tested. Don't hold it against me. My German is much better. La vie d'un artisan. Bonjour. Bonjour. Welcome. Um, what else can I say in French? Oh, I can say lots of things in French, but I don't think they're particularly suitable to be streamed on YouTube. Um, Jane, hi Steffi, Emma and Fluff friends. How lovely to be here. Two days in a row. Yes, because yesterday, if you've missed it, we did the unboxing of our subscription boxes as it's the 1st of March. It's the dragon, the um, rainbow fairy and um, the Easter surprise box. You can watch this still on YouTube um, if, you are, if you want to or you can watch it live um, tomorrow evening, Wednesday at 7pm on Facebook, on our Facebook group, The Makers. Um, Alicia is there. Um, hi, Felty friends. And um, Carol says, I can't wait to get cracking on this one. <laughs> okay. Um, Margo says, hello, Steffi and Fluffy friends. Gina is there. Jude is there. Good afternoon to everybody. Amanda, hello. Gina, I can see the top. Ah. Okay, that was my blooper. I'm not going to say it out loud. Um, ignoring all of this, Fanny says, I would say hello, Fluffy mama. Oh, <laughs> That's the chick comments coming up if they're knock, knock, knock on the egg and then popping out. Um, chick would say it's time to scramble out. Um, Bridget says, hi, Steffi. Dull and dreary weather in Lincolnshire, says Gina. Good morning from Nottingham. Donna says, my chick would say, hey, mum, I was getting short of space in there and a little hungry, ran out of food. Serena says, hi, Steffi and everyone. Has anybody ever seen a chick hatch? I've not seen it for real. I've only seen it like in the film, but it must be absolutely amazing. I probably would cry if I saw it happen, little chick being born. Um, Jane says, sun coming out where I am in Somerset. Joe says, um, hi, Steffi, Emma and my felty friends. Um, Jude says, mine would say, excuse me, let me out. Of course it would. Um, Suze is there. Hi, all. My chick would be singing, I want to break free. <laughs> I want to sing that too as well. Now I like that one. <laughs> uh, 
Um, oh, we've got Faith there. Yay, Faith. Hello, how are you doing? I hope um, I hope things are um, okay at your end. And it's really lovely you have got the time to join us. And I'm sending you lots of love. Um, Jules says... Um, I missed it yesterday. I was yarn bombing a post box with Duffy. Didn't have time to felt anything, but we'll look at Christmas. We'll look at Christmas. How do you think felted items would weather? Oh, I have to tell you a funny story about yarn bombing. So the town that I used to live in, I won't mention a name so I don't embarrass any um, any town councils. Um, years and years ago, I, well, I had a, I had actually a craft shop and um, I... I wanted to do yarn bombing in the little street that I was in. So I approached the town council, I wrote to them and I said, um, could I, could I please, would you give us permission to do some yarn bombing? <laughs> and they came back and they said, does it involve fireworks or anything dangerous? <laughs> I don't know if it was the combination of me being German and and bombing that they suddenly thought there would be a blitz on their town but uh, they had absolutely no idea what yarn bombing was and it just absolutely cracked me up I will be honest even now I just think it's hilarious that they thought I was going to launch a rocket a little few a little few um a few grenades fire grenades and yes um sit down on this bench madam and then that person takes off, off up in the air because it's dangerous yarn bombing anyway um, enough of that. Um, my my imagination is running away with me. Okay, I'm gonna not look at these comments for a bit now because we're here to do some um, felting, and you can win yourself today. Where's it gone? Oh, there. This bag of wool, which is the Easter mix. I've got it out here as well. It's a lovely combination of lots of um, core, lovely core wool. Our neon yellow, which is perfect for chicks, so you get that in there as well. Then you get in there, it's a, it's been sort of like a hard think of, um, you get a lot of this brown in there that makes bunnies. I will tell you also where you can find all these makes. You get our, this one is the um, natural dyed rainbow. So um, once you've got this, you've got pretty much all the sort of pastel -y spring colors in there already. That's great for decorating the egg. You get some black. If you're making a chick, you need it for eyes. Um, maybe for bunny rabbit, you need it for eyes too. You get some um, of this bright lichen green. I love that one. It's such a lovely spring color. Some orange. If you're making a chick, you might need that too. Um, and then um, some pale pink here as well, or light pink, our New Zealand light pink, because that's, of course, you need that for, for any kind of spring decoration. So all of this you've got here. Now, um, to win this, all you need to do is to tell us what um, what the um, the chick will say if it knocks on, side, on the inside of the, of the egg. Knock, knock, knock. What will it say when it comes out? And that Easter mix is not available to purchase just yet, but it will be live hopefully on our web shop tomorrow um, afternoon. So if you, if you want it, and if you want to know you've got one for sure, you can win yourself this bag um, today, which is the 2nd of March during the live stream on YouTube. But also we will be restreaming this on Thursday at 7 p.m. on Facebook. So if you're watching on at 7 p.m. on Facebook, then you um, you have the opportunity to win that um, again. Right, I'm going to go on the overhead camera. Let's start our um, Easter egg. Now, if you ever, this is sort of a bit of a tip here. This is the egg, by the way, so you know what we are aiming for. If you ever want to know how big would something be when you um, <clears throat> when you make it, because this gives absolutely no indication how small something could or big something could uh, be once once it's felted down, a good indication um, you will get if you roll this into as tight a ball as you possibly can. So really, really tightly roll it up as tight as you can, then you know this is probably a good um, idea of how small something could be and um, if you're making an egg that was actually quite a good sort of guess just tearing that off that's not bad for an, an egg because as you felt it down a bit more it will become tighter so I'm going to work with that quantity in any case you shouldn't need more I would say than seven to ten grams depending how big your um, chickens lay eggs I'm of course going to use um, our um, earth mat. I can't go on enough about this, but we have worked out that we have saved 41 Beely, Beely, Beely wins. <laughs> 41 Beely wins. 
<laughs> 41 wheelie bins of um, rubbish, of foam, um, in, in the short time that we've been um, using our earth-friendly felting mat. And of course, in all of our kits, you're getting um, the <clears throat> equivalent um, wool mat, the eco wool mat instead. So we have saved 41 beely wins. No, yeah, no, that's right, wheelie bins. Did I just say that? 41 um, wheelie bins of foam mats to go be dumped into the rubbish or landfills or oceans or wherever they go on the moon, planet, China, wherever. And um, and we've, we've replaced it with a, a compostable, um, earth-friendly felting mat. The top, certainly you can put in the compost and the base is 70% wool, 30% man-made fiber should never be. We ha people, we have not had anybody yet who had to replace that one. <clears throat> Right, let's stop waffling. Okay, rolling this back into the egg shape that I just did. And what, I do, what I'm doing is I'm trying to make a really firm shape because the firmer you make a shape, the less you've got to stab it with a needle. So I'm rolling this up, um, folding in the sides as I'm going along. If at this point you sort of um, get one end up slightly... <clears throat> um, slightly fatter than the other end, that's perfect because that's what we want to aim for. Um, but at the moment it looks like sort of a long sausage and I'm using my coarse felting needle um, to secure the shape by just stabbing the last wispy ends into the into the shape. So I've got a, um, a bit of a misshapen Easter egg here at the moment and now I'm going to start shaping it and I'm very conscious that you can't see very much against this um, earth mat as much as I love it. I'm going to switch over to the uh, basic uh, wool mats here or the eco wool mats um, that um, you would get in a kit. We also sell these as a tool kit so if you don't want to quite invest in an earth mat, they are expensive. You can get a toolkit that has a slightly larger, a 10 by 10 centimeter square in there of um, the, um, the the eco or the basic wool mat, and you get needles in it as well. So that is a is a good is a is a good bargain to buy. These mats don't last as long as the earth friendly felting mats, but it's a, a brilliant start to make an, um, an, a difference to the environment. All I'm doing now is I'm just felting down the wispy ends that are sticking out and I've got to decide at this point already what's going to be the more pointy end and what's going to be the rounder end. So I'm going to do, go with, with this with a round end and the other end with a more pointy end. Now this is a great opportunity to pull out your uh, multi-tools like the three needle felting tool. And um, what I'm going to do is whilst I'm just grabbing one of the um, my favorite three needle felting tools. I'm just going to show you again um, what you're going to win today. If you answer the question, what will the chick say? Knock, knock, knock. When it pops out of the egg, what is it going to say? Um, oh, come on, you silly three needle felting tool. Where have you disappeared to now? I am still here and I will be coming back. I might just have to use a different three needle felting tool but in any case the one I'm trying to find this is the clover one because I love it really love it a lot it's um it's a little bit better quality than um than this one here which is the blue three needle felting tool um only the plastic is better quality just the the feel of it um of course you can exchange the needles that are in there so one if they break at any point don't, you don't have to chuck the whole tool away you can also just work with two or with one needle instead of just three you can uh, put different size needles in there prefer well i haven't ever tried it just putting putting different size needles in as the same in one load um but you could so what I'm doing at the moment is I'm just using the three needle felting tool. Let's have a look overhead again um, so that I can shape my egg in that way. What you see me do now is I've got, obviously got a really long egg here. So by stabbing into it in at a shallow angle in that direction, I'm already trying to shrink the length of the egg down without compromising the shape that I'm trying to achieve. So I want it to be pointy at that end, but I don't want to stab into here because then I'm just going to make it um, make it flat at that bit. So I can already manipulate the shape of the egg by going in a shallow angle because if you remember, wherever you stab the needle is where the reduction takes place. So at the moment it's pushing it that way. And then I'm definitely going to in into the into the top of here because I can round this off again. When you're using um, a three needle felting tool like I am using at the moment, 
if you stab yourself, it really does hurt. In fact, it's, it hurts three times as much as with a single needle. So do be careful with your fingers. We do sell the leather finger protectors. I've never worn them myself. I just, I, I just, I don't know. I just like being close to my work and I just make sure I don't stab myself. Um, but a lot of people swear on them. And if it's a question of do I needle felt or do I not needle felt, then I would say do whatever you need to do so you can enjoy this amazing craft that um, more and more people are discovering. And we've heard some, we, we get some really heartfelt stories. Um, if you want to hear some of them, then um, join our Everyone a Maker Facebook group. We've recently um, had loads and loads of members join us because we, we've had a, um, a special um, charity event that we, we, we did in partnership with um, the Cats Protection. And um, if you've participated and you've um, made your contribution, then thank you very much because we've actually helped 300 cats to be fed for a whole year by raising um, over £22,000 for cat cats protection. So we're extremely proud of this, um, notwithstanding that we've sent over 2,000 kits out um, into into the, well, mainly the UK, actually. I was going to say into the whole of the world, but it wasn't quite as um, as exciting as that. So <clears throat> how, why did I talk about that? Um, oh yes, needle felting is getting more and more popular. Check out what people are saying about it. If this is your first time watching me do this, then um, do do definitely read up on how, how it helps people to, um, I don't know, with their mental health, maybe just forgetting some of their worries for a little bit, emptying your mind and just putting all the energy in your hands and stabbing away at this um, shape here. I'm going to go um, overhead in a minute, but before I do this, I'm just going to check out some of the <clears throat> um, comments here. Uh, oh, I'm missing all so many comments. Oh my goodness, we've got 62 people watching. Do give us the thumbs up on, on YouTube, all of you, all at once. Let's crush YouTube. And um, and also, um, of course, if you're not subscribed to our YouTube channel, then please, please subscribe. Tell all your friends to subscribe. Tell your granny, your granddad, your niece, your nephew, your dog, your cat, your parrot, whoever. Tell them to subscribe. Let's get our um, subscribers up. Let's aim for 3,000 by the end of this day. Um, maybe a bit ambitious, but I'm an, a born optimist. So um, let's let's get people subscribing to our channel. And um, oh, I need to. I was going to read the oh, I was going to read the comments. I'm getting all distracted here. Okay, I'm not going to be able to keep up with all these comments. I still haven't got to the bit that I left it off. Um, got so many people. I'm trying to um so the the um the the different colors in the easter egg mix let's just go through this again is um I'm not entirely sure if it's our luxury core wool. I think it might actually be looking at it. It I think it's our organic luxury core wool, which is absolutely beautiful to needle felt with. It's a little bit like the lanolin rich without the lanolin. Um, we've got our neon yellow in there. We've got the natural dyed. So this is this is no chemicals used. This is um for, for dyes. It's all natural dyed um New Zealand merino. Um, which is sort of a, it's almost like a rainbow, but if you know me, it's not a rainbow. Um, and then we have got in there the New Zealand light pink. Um, we've got the New Zealand black in there, New Zealand orange, uh, actually it's the mountain sheep orange. Um, and then the brown wool that's in there is our Russian caracal, um, but you can also use the caracal merino. We have a bit of a shortage of the Russian caracal at the moment. It's one of our most popular wools. We use it for hares as well and for the hedgehogs and um, with um, some of the supplies issues that we've had due to the nasty B word. I'm not even going to say it um, because it just reminds me of thoughts I don't, I'd rather not have while I'm sitting here enjoying all your company. Um, yes, so basically you can use the caracal uh, merino if you can't get hold of the Russian uh, caracal at the moment. 
and, um, and, and, and that is the brown that you will find in that Easter mix. So it's one or the other. So I'm still working on shaping my Easter egg. I'm trying to, let's go on the overhead camera so that you can see what I've achieved whilst I've been talking and still not read the comments. So it's getting, it's getting there. With the Easter egg, if you're making Easter egg, you really want it to be nice and solid. So this is one of the projects where I'm not gonna stop until I've got a nice solid shape. So I'm, I'm literally switching between using the three needle felting tool. I've also got one, oh, I've just loaded two needles into it, which is also great. So do, um, if you want to have a multiple of these tools, you can never have too many because you can load them up with different size needles, different number of needles. So you don't have to unscrew them every time if you want to um, make a change. Just get a few of them. Like I said, I, I love the uh, Clover one. It's definitely a slightly better quality, but these blue ones are just, they're, they're great too, especially if you want to invest maybe in a few, go for the um, cheaper version. They're, they're actually half the price, so it's a bit of a no-brainer. So I'm still trying to shorten the, the length of my egg because it was quite a, a long torpedo shape egg. And I'm so therefore I'm still going in it at a, at a sort of a shallow angle trying to reduce the size down and um, and then I'm felting all the lumps and bumps that are sticking out I'm felting down and as soon as I've done that there will be other lumps and bumps appearing so I'm I'm having to go over the egg a lot um, and um, and felting it all the while making it nice and solid and therefore it's also shrinking in size so from it starting out a lot larger it is actually getting a lot smaller once you start adding the surface color that will also reduce the size of the egg but I, I do want there to be a nice solid shape that I can start adding the colors over the top so whilst I'm still um, adding the um, um, st stabbing on the needle I'm going to go and have a little look at the comments because I do want to read what's going on <gasps> we're on 65 viewers how many thumbs up have we got? My my screen doesn't update this, so somebody needs to tell me this now. Um, I think oh, I, th I really do think this is probably the most we've ever had in one sitting. So I'm I'm feeling extremely excited. Not not that it's anything as near as what we had at the weekend when we taught um, the mini cut workshop, where we've actually had fifteen hundred people, and um, I did feel a little bit nervous. I will be honest, but it was all good. Right, so. Um, Oh, we've got 43 likes. Excellent. Who is the one who didn't do it? Emma, is that you? <laughs> it's probably Emma. Emma is, of course, at the other end where the makers are. So, um, okay, right. Um, um, Faith says, my chick would say, hi, mama, where's the chocolate? Um, oh, Trisha would say, peekaboo, of course. As Serena said, mine would say, oh no, it's so noisy here. Um, oh, is this in your family? Probably Serena with four young children. Uh, Catherine says, my chick would ask if it was safe to cross the road or does she need to wait until she's a chicken? <laughs> well, I'm not sure it's safe to cross the road when you're a chicken either. <laughs> well, not that I've ever seen many chickens cross the road, but that might be why. Um, sorry, I'm in, in a bit of a silly mood today. I'm trying to get over it. Um, oh, thank you, Steffi. Back at you, hugs and kisses. Missed you all so much. Oh, thank you, Faith. Yeah, we've missed you too. So hopefully we'll see you every week now. Um, Claire says, my chick would say, did I come first on my egg? Well, that is the big question, isn't it? But um, you could find out or oh, next week, Tuesday, what comes first, the egg or the chicken, when we're making, oh, she's fallen over, silly chicken, when we're making this crazy bird, um, the standing chicken, um, I love, I absolutely love the possibilities of her. So, you know, she's not even the craziest version on the planet, but I'm sure you could make one that's a lot more um, wacky. I, I really want to give her really big hips and a big bum and, um, and can you just see how, you know, this is typical what chickens would do, isn't it? Run, run, run. And then when they get, when they want to get to something, they just jump. So <laughs> I think you should all uh, make a chicken with me and then we'll take really silly videos of what um, your chicken gets up to and um, and who who your chicken is invading. And this one, this one is like, oh, look, she's laid an egg. <laughs> Maybe I should have asked her to make the egg. 
So there you go. That's starting on Tuesday. And then we have three weeks of the crazy chicken um, before we get to the end of March. And then we're going to do daisies. It's all about making daisy chains because ta -ta -ta -ta, this is in preparation of the daisy fairy, which is coming in April. And I absolutely, I will be, I will, I will say this, even though it sounds a bit big headed. This has been a really amazing project to make and it's all water soluble paper needle felted onto water soluble paper and um, and then attached to this leaf ribbon that we sell as well so this will be the free tutorial on the april newsletter but of course this month we're in march now it is the easter egg so you will get this tutorial on the back of our newsletter if you buy from us and it's also available as a free tutorial on our website and of course right now if you're watching this here um then um, in at the end of um, March, we're also making these um, daisies. So this is needle felted onto felt, which is another another um, way of how we make flowers. So we usually do them either needle felted onto water soluble paper, which makes them really lovely and delicate and it's easy to do. Doesn't take very long either. Or we um, use the the uh, felt, the wool viscous felt to make the flowers. So we have a whole repertoire of flowers already in, in, in our um, collection, including the pansies and we've got um, a water lily and a lot of this is also available as a free YouTube tutorial, um, including <clears throat> daffodils, the ones that you can see here. That was one of our first, one of our first tutorials, live streams. Um, at the beginning of lockdown last year and we look back and we just cringe well I cringe anyway because it was definitely full of bloopers it was so full of bloopers that I'm actually talking to people who are not even meant to be in the room with me so if you want to have a good old giggle um, then then go and look back at that but um, I'm sure you laugh just as much at the moment um, at, at um, and that's what it's all about let's have a bit of fun right I'm still not getting further with reading um, oh, we've got we've got our our um, I want to say it's French. I'm definitely yes, it's French. Um, Bonjour, Chick says no. That's not French. That's obviously um, English. Um, Chick says I'm glad I didn't become a deviled egg. Oh, um, Stephanie says I yarn bombed a lamp post last year. Did you destroy it? Did you literally throw a bomb at it? Um, obviously not. Uh, remember the thumbs up, everyone, please. Thank you, Donna. I think I think everybody's put the thumbs up except for one person. We'll find out. We, we set the YouTube police on you and find out who is the person who hasn't given us the thumbs up. It's probably me because I'm actually watching and I haven't given myself the thumbs up. I'm doing it now. There. Okay. Found it. Um, Jules says, I meant... My plans for Christmas are in place for next year. Oh, I see that was the Christmas one. Postbox topper and your skiing polar bear. That's why I asked about felt outside. Well, do you know, it um, it um, it's definitely um, um, it the wool fares quite well. We had when we did the yarn bombing with flowers in in um in the street that I was talking about earlier it lasted for a long time i think the, the um the, and certainly if you're using wool it lasts a long time it doesn't like it it doesn't break or anything like this the only thing that will happen is it starts to look a bit grubby because rain is not always clean and then you know you might get sort of the odd <clears throat> gust of wind that blows dust and and rubbish along so i think they uh, if anything it just gets a bit dirty and a bit sort of grubby looking but it doesn't break or anything like that if um quite the opposite if weather and weather and wind will felt things down even more um so yes yeah, so I, I, it shouldn't it shouldn't be um get it shouldn't get damaged but it it might just get dirty um what else have we got um, and I've, I've done um, Emma such an injustice. She was the first one to like it. So, But apparently there's still 11 people who haven't liked it. Mm -hmm. Yes, well, I wonder who they are. Not that I'm holding any grudges. Um, Alicia says, definitely can, definitely can felt bomb if you go ahead and wet felt it beforehand. Then it's just like wool felted coats. Oh, nice. Um, Lil Miss. Simu22. My chick would say fluff mummy. I've had an excellent time growing. I can't wait to get cracking and fluff about the place. Oh, um, Emma, you're going to have a hard job today uh, picking a winner, winner at random. So if you don't know our, about our competition yet, <laughs> can't speak today. Um, we don't ever 
um, judge. We don't ever find find a, um, um, a a winner of any of our prizes by thinking, oh, we like that better than that. We never do that. They're all random picks. So if you, um, which which also means that sometimes people have won lots and others haven't. It's because it's all literally random, um, randomly selected. Um, I need to go to the range and buy a white lighted tree to hang my eggs on. Oh, that's a nice idea. When you can go to the range, we will all be going to the range, but for now we're not going anywhere, as, as, as I suppose. Um, my chick would say, hey, what's cracking? Um, Catherine says, sounds like a good shopping trip, Alicia. Definitely, well, any, any shopping trip will be a good shopping trip again, um, once we're allowed to do it. Um, Jack says, hi everyone, my chick would say, you are cracking me up. Let me out. Um, Alicia says, if I'm using my merino wool tops, pastel rainbow to cover one. Okay, um, that reminds me now. I think my egg's definitely solid enough. <clears throat> so let's um, start coloring it in. If for whatever reason you've got an egg that um, is too skinny at the top or um, too not, not round enough at the bottom, then you can, of course, add wool anytime. And to do this, all you do is you just... Use um, um, a bit of wool like that, keep it nice and thin, and then just add where wherever you need to add bulk, just add it over the top and then felt it down. So if, if that is what you need to do, then do do that. Um, I'm just going to um, add a little bit more on the, on the base of my egg here and um, felt this down. And um, I've definitely made a really solid egg here now with um, this amazing luxury organic core wool, which you can win as part of the Easter mix bag that makes um, lots of eggs, but also other projects. Um, oh, yes, I was going to tell you. So if you want to know how to make the Easter bunny that um, we sell as a kit as well. Um, but if you want to see it done live, you can go on to the um, creative craft show um, the Creative Craft Show Facebook page, which has got a um, the Easter Bunny as a free tutorial. You might have to scroll scroll down on the page because we did this. I did this tutorial probably about um, maybe ten days ago, something like that. So you can find it there. Um, I think they have like a video um, banner, so you can find it in the videos there as well, uh, rather than scrolling down on the on the on, on the posts. And um, so that's where you find the Easter Bunny. I think it might also be one on our YouTube channel, so from last year. So you can go on there as well. The Easter Chick is on there as well. And um, remember the daffodils. So all you need for that is a bit of um, the that neon yellow wool and the orange. And then you need some of the wool viscous felt sheets that uh, we use for for making uh, flowers and landscape pictures and the like. Um, so you can get that and then make the daffodils by following the instructions on there. Um, what else have we got? Um, what else is Eastery? Um, chick, bunny, eggs. Can't think of anything else. Right. So this is my egg now. It, um, if it still looks a little bit lumpy, but I'm not too worried about this because I'm going to definitely going to cover it up really smoothly with, um, yeah, with, with, with a colored wool. So the way that I've de decorated this egg is I've kind of imagined that at the bottom you've got grass, at the top you've got sky, and then in between you've got flowers. That's the principle of it. So it's a little bit like a landscape. So what you need to do is grab some green, whatever green you've got. I've got a collection here of the two. And you could even add a little bit of brown so that it, it just gives it um, um, dimensions a little bit of and you could mix all three together or you could just put it on there and then lay put other layers over the top and the way that I do this I literally paint onto it and it's really you need very very little um, wool for this so I'm laying it over the top I've just used that natural plant dyed here and then I'm stabbing that down so just go really gentle with it don't pile it on just really go um, steady with um, the wool because we're we're adding layer upon layer. It's a bit like painting with oil. You're just adding more and more. And in the meantime, it is another opportunity to um, shape your egg if you feel that there's sort of a bit of shaping that needs doing. So um, the instru the instructions for the daffodil um, um, is is 
there are no sort of instructions that you can download, but you can watch the video and we are putting what you need for the daffodils onto the, um, I think it's, I can't remember now what Emma said. I think it's going somewhere. She'll put it somewhere. Um, she'll, she'll tell me again in a minute and then I'll tell you where it's going, but I, I actually forgot what she said. So I'm adding more of the green. You, if, if you want to mix the wool, then of course mixing wool means that you lay the two colors on top of each other and just pull them apart with your thumb and your fingernail. Oh, it's, it wasn't even the, it wasn't even the daffodils. It was the daisies. And where are they going, Emma? Maybe I need to be told that again. Oh, I think the daisy, oh no, I, I can answer that. So the daisy ingredients will go onto the preview of the live stream. So because they're all scheduled, obviously, you can see that on the schedule, all the ingredients that you need to make the daisies, the daisy chain and the felt daisies that will go onto the onto the um, scheduled live stream on YouTube. So you, as all of all of our makes and make-alongs are always listed on the schedule. And um, we've also got, so we've also got a make-along section on our website. If you've never known that, I didn't. <laughs> now you know, there's a make-along um, section on our website and on there it gives you also um, the the materials that you need to make along I suppose. Right so I've, I'm covering the base of the egg with the green still. I'm still working on this and I'm bringing it a little bit higher to the middle of the egg on some areas. This is there is no real plan in this. I'm just sort of trying to imagine you standing in long grass and some is longer than others and just felt it down and get it down. I'm switching between my needles. I'm not going quite as deep in anymore now. I'm just sort of sinking the needles maybe about half a centimeter to a centimeter rather than the full length. And um and then I need to do I need to do the sky as well. So for this I'm using tiny bits of blue and maybe you can put a bit of purple in there as well. It's all in the it's all in the pack and definitely white. So you need a little bit more white. Um so depending on how you want your sky to be, you could even put a little bit more of the red into it that comes as it's it's more sort of like a ready orange that's more like a sun sunrise or sunset, but I'm keeping mine purpley blue and white and for this I am I'm definitely toning down the blue. That's quite a dark blue even though it's a, not a dark blue, but for sky it's quite a I want it to be a nice bright summer sky or spring sky even. So I'm mixing quite a bit of white into the wool so that I have a nice um, mellow a nice mellow sky and then I'm doing exactly what I just did but at the other end laying out the wool in really thin wispy fibers felting it down as I'm going along and um, and in this at the same time you you will inevitably um, shape the egg whether it's the shape you want to be or not so then you have to compensate for what you've um, what you've done um, but I'm putting the wool down here and whilst I'm doing this I'm just reading some of the comments and I'm, I'm really sorry that I can't I'm not commenting on all of your um, comments because I'd, it's just too much for me to get through um, my ch oh I don't know what I just I don't know what I've just said that I won't ever be able to say again but if it was the if it was the um the really bins what did I say the beanie wins no I can't even remember now the I can't even remember what I said wrong so um maybe it was that hi everyone my chick would say oh no I've read that already um my chick would say hey Chick me out, so, chick me out, so excited to see you. Um, my chick would, um, was knock, knock, knocking. His first words when he popped out of the egg was, I am exhausted. Ah, that's a good one, exhausted. Nice one. Um, chick would say, knock, 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 knock. Is it Easter yet? I'm looking forward to my chocolate. Yes, well, I'm looking forward to some chocolate as well for Easter. Well, actually, I don't need to wait until Easter. I can just buy some and eat it now. Is that allowed? Um, there's been a lot of Easter, <clears throat> Easter chocolate out and about already. Right, still painting the top of my egg. Just thought I'd show you what it looks like from 
this perspective. So I'm, I'm still adding more sky into the top. Um, the egg, you'd think it's a really quick project, but you, the, the, the thing is that you want it to be nice and firm. So you, you don't want it to be a squishy, a squishy old egg. It needs to have a, a nice, um, solid shape to it so that, um, you can add the surface color over the top without putting it out of shape. So it needs to be um, a nice, nice solid shape. And um, I'm still adding blue over the top, felting it down with my, I'm still using my coarse needle actually. It still fits quite nicely into the egg. And the exciting thing um, is when you start adding the flowers into it. Now we're not going to give the flowers um, the real sort of detail that you imagine a daffodil would have with every single petal and um, or flower, st uh, flower um, stamen or anything like this. We're not doing that. We're just giving the impression of a flower and uh, just because we know that daffodils, everybody recognizes daffodils. If you've got a, a, a lighter yellow and a, um, a darker um, core that everybody will recognize that as a daffodil. Um, you would often recognize, say, little clumps of um, little clumps of crocuses just by the coloring. So it's bright orange, bright purple, that sort of go with with colors that are easily recognized. That's the same with poppies. I'm not suggesting you put poppies on your Easter egg, but if you have a bright red um, blob with a bit of dark either brown or black in the middle people will you you know the eyes will turn that into oh what do I know that looks like that and um, in in connection with the field and sitting on grass then you could turn it into a poppy so what I'm going to do is I'm going to play with the fact that we are easily deceived and um, and that's how I'm going to make the flowers on the egg appear what what they are without having to make very very detailed flowers so I'm going to do this over with an overview camera so if you look at this egg um, there these flowers here you would easily recognize these as daffodils so all you need to do is just use a little bit of bright yellow don't even need to shape it particularly just put it on there felt it on like a, a, a yellow blob and make sure it's on there nicely and as I'm felting this on I notice that the the egg is really is really felted solidly because I'm not making an indentation as I'm putting this on so that's good a good sign if you have made um, the egg too soft then um, you you might have to compensate around it and just have to keep sculpting the egg so it's not wrong and then I'm using a smaller bit of orange and I put that in the center so that's um, the first daffodil here. And then all I need to do is I need to use a little bit of green and I'm going to um, make a flower, the, I make the stem now. So I'm um, making that quite distinct between my fingers and felt that down. So I'm twizzling it between my fingers and felt it down into the ground, into the earth. And um, when I get to, when I finish the daffodils and I'm starting on the on the purple flowers, that's when we call the uh, competition as closed. So I'm going to do another daffodil next to it because they often appear in clumps. So another one there. Maybe make that a little bit lower just so that it's it it's more random. Looks it doesn't look. They don't need to look like soldiers in a row. There we go. Put a little bit of the bright orange in the, in the middle and you can see that uh, the um, just over 80 gram of the Easter mix which is what you can win by telling us and there's still a chance to win it to tell us what your chick would say when, when it pops out of the egg um, there is 80 grams of um, just over 80 grams of this Easter mix in um, in in the wool mix and it's absolutely loads to certainly to make Easter eggs, but also to make all kinds of other things like maybe an Easter bunny, Easter chick. Um, maybe you've got other Easter ideas that you want to make. Maybe you want to make a picture. It's a great one for painting pictures like in a pastel color. Now you can bring sort of little strands of green to the side of the stem because obviously there are some leaves there, some flower um, leaves of the daffodil, so you can 
you can add that into it. None of it has got a great detail. It is literally just what what you sort of roughly imagine and um, and then the your eyes will will want to see what you're making here. So just keep the leaves coming from the base of that flower stem going up and um, and that's basically how you do the daffodils. If you want to make a little clump of um, primroses, which are, they're all out at the moment. So if you think of spring flowers, primroses, um, Primroses, daffodils, uh, crocuses. There's definitely no lavender out, but I'm gonna put lavender on there anyway, just just because I want to. Could also be wisteria, that's not out yet. Any sort of purple flower, just like the idea of purple flowers. Um, so I'm gonna, I've got, I've done my my um, daffodils there. You can put more there if you want. There's a bit of a space there now to do little primroses. All you need is light pink. Put that down. Yeah. Then you need a little bit of purple, definitely purple primrose is about. A little bit of purple, put that there, maybe there. And uh, primroses, they often appear uh, short, short stemmed flowers and they sort of appear in a, in a, um, a cluster. I'm putting that there. Then you've also got um, a light yellow. So put a bit of light yellow there because that's in in your a natural dyed mix putting that there light yellow and then all you need to do is put a little bit of orange in the center of of several several centers in there and it looks like you've got a cluster of um um is it orange now is it oh i couldn't watch this um can't remember now. I think it's is it orange or yellow uh, inside a primrose? It's yellow actually. So we need to put a bright yellow in the middle. I think it is that. Um, so just put a few yellow centers into that collection of of colors that you've made there. There you go. Okay, um, and um, we, we're finishing with these flowers now, which means we're moving on to the next ones. So Emma is going to um, um, select the winner now, and then she'll get back to us. And just by doing this, um, you can see that it just gives sort of the impression of, of, of little flowers, little low growing flowers on, on um, in, in a cluster there. And you can repeat that, of course. The centers... The little yellow centers will determine how many there are. So if you need to add more flowers, then add a little bit more of the colors that you've chosen to use. So I'm putting another pale pink or light pink here. And then you can add another bit of bright yellow in the middle. There. And, and it, I'm using tiny amounts. I can't even weigh this. It's, these are literally like tiny little wisps. There's not no amount whatsoever. Um, of any any considerable gram size and again just put a little bit of um, of a green um, so that it looks like they're nestled amongst their own leaves but also maybe in a in the grass so you can color around that and just give them um, sort of a setting if you like and then you keep work and keep working your way around the Easter egg. It's like painting a mini landscape of flowers onto um, onto your egg. And all the while, you might find you need to felt down certain parts more because, as with needle felting, as you, as we all know, you put things out of shape. Okay. Okay, we've got a winner of the Easter mix. And the winner is Carolyn R, R for Romeo. Carolyn R, um, you've won yourself an Easter mix. So if you could send us an email to info at the makers with two s's.co.uk, then um, we will get in touch with you and um, find out what the correct address is to send it to. Right, so there's my um, egg. I've got daffodils. I've got a collection of little primroses and I'm going to now color in the other side. But before I do this, I'm just gonna go into the, onto the larger camera again to just um, see how everybody's doing. How are you all doing? If you've missed the unwrapping of our subscription boxes yesterday, then you will have missed meeting our magic dragon. There he is. 
swooping down to say hello to you. He's got Angelina fiber wings. He has got a poseable body, so you can um, bend his tail, his body, his everything. It all bends into shape, so you can pose him. His wings also, they bend as well. And um, he is um, our maker's box for March. So if you, it's, it's, you just at the beginning, just at the right time, if you're watching this on the 2nd of March to get your box. So get your order in. If you're not a subscriber yet, then remember, we don't tie you in a contract. You can cancel anytime. You can skip boxes if you don't like the following projects um, or if you're too busy or whatever happens in your life. You can skip boxes and um, that is the, the the maker's box. And then for, um, where did she go? Oh, she's on the floor. Sorry, she's flown, she's flown down there for a minute and she's lost her hair, her hair uh, decoration. Oh, I just have to take it from there. Okay, so this is um, the, the one that I'm showing you next is our rainbow fairy. She, um, I have to keep the dragon and the rainbow fairy apart because the dragon is, is has is rather smitten by her. I'm not so sure she's she's particularly um um she's a little bit scared still of the dragon so she's she's um and she's also really busy at the moment because she's making lots of rainbows. Um but yeah that this is the rainbow fairy. There she is. She's got she's holding a little a tiny little jar of um of rainbow that um, is spilling out from the lid. <clears throat> um, she's got a very bright rainbow skirt on. She's got white bloomers like clouds, like white fluffy clouds. And she's also got uh, rainbow legs and um, uh, rainbow wings. So you can make her from our fairy box in March. That's all um, available to get right now. The fairy boxes are slightly different. You can either subscribe, it saves you 20% or you can buy one of boxes. And, um, and we've got a, we've got a surprise box, um, as well, which the theme is Easter and, um, Easter, you can probably make an Easter egg from the Easter box. I'm guessing, not that I'm giving anything away. And, um, we do ship all around the world. Um, I know there have been, sort of slight issues with shipping to mainland Europe because of the um, naughty B word. But we have been shipping um, to the US and Canada for um, for many years now with no problems whatsoever. <clears throat> but I will say we do offer different shipping options. And if you want to be able to track your parcel and know exactly where it is at a certain time, then definitely invest in the, in the tracked postage that just keeps us all um, free from headaches and wondering when your parcel will arrive. Right, going back to the um, Easter egg, I'm going to the overview camera again and I want to show you how to maybe add some more flowers. Now I've got quite a white patch here so I'm going to make that a little bit more green first with a bit more grass. You can, of course, you don't just have to stick to flowers. You could put mini rabbits on there, baby rabbits, or maybe a tiny badger. Um, all I will say is because you're working in miniatures, just, just don't worry about too much details. Just imagine what do you sort of mainly associate with a with a bunny. You just probably associate a little brown body with a white tail and maybe some sticky out ears. And that's all you need to worry about. So don't, you know, don't start giving it um, a smile or facial grimaces. It's not, it's not necessary. So for the, um, the lavender stokes or maybe purple flowers, whatever you come up with, I'm actually using a little bit of brown just to break up the green a bit and mix that into the green. And for this one, I'm starting with the stalks rather than the flowers. So I'm mixing a little bit of green and brown just for a variation, just so I've got another color here. I'm making um, a long stalk and I'm felting that down. It's reaching all the way up to the sky. So you can see that um, less is always more with needle felting, especially when you decorate a delicate Easter egg. So you, the temptation might be to pile the colors on. But actually, I think it, it's a little bit counterproductive because you just you just add bulk and then it, it doesn't look sort of delicate anymore. So the idea with the Easter egg is to keep it nice and um, subtle. That's probably the message here. 
um, that you could take away from this. And I'm just doing two long stalks. I'm sure there's lots of purple flowers that I um, you could do that I just can't think of at the moment. And um, and there's the purple wool from the from the uh, natural mix. And I'm just using tiny tiny little blobs of purple and put them on one side of the stalk and then I put them on the other side of the stalk so it's it, it could almost be like a fantasy flower and I'm going I'm working my way um, from the top down so I'm going from one side to the other just tiny amounts this really works well to use wool buds because you can tear off tiny little wispy bits but you can decorate your egg however you like. It's not doesn't have to be in this way. You can use, um, as Alicia mentioned on um, on the comments here, you can use the uh, wool tops to decorate the egg. Um, if you want to use our um, pay our um, what's it called again? Uh, pastel rainbow that has got beautiful colors in there. You will also find that if you're a subscriber in March for our subscription boxes, that is part of the wool that's in the sub club, which means that you can use your code to get 20% off. So that is um, just making another, another example of a flower. And now I want to add a little bit of green at the bottom so that it sort of, it softens the whole appearance a bit. And you can you can even felt over it. It will just look as if so you've got a bit of grass coming up um, around it. And then you can repeat this on the other stalk as well. Um, with all of this felting, I am still um, shaping the egg now and then because it, it might just need a little bit more, but it is a pretty solid. I mean, I, there's not much air I can squeeze out. And that is basically how you make your Easter egg. Um, I hope that has been a useful tutorial. Um, I've spent a whole hour just making one. I thought I could make a second one. And I've even made a, um, a white shape to start with. But I think I've shown you everything there is to show on this particular one. So go go away and make your own now. And uh, and share with us on Every Wanna Maker on the Facebook group that we um, run. And it would be lovely to see to see lots of eggs pop up, pop 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 pop, and um and maybe it's it's ready for your crazy standing chicken. Remember, you can get your pack still to make the chicken. It's all in it, everything you need to make the chicken, um is in there, and it's a full tutorial of, of three one-hour sessions where we start with the legs, um then we start with um the the fat fat bit around. Um, on top of her legs and um, and then on the last session we we will do the 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 head and there's a lots of tips and tricks on how to needle felt eyes which are incidentally I love needle felting eyes and you can give them different expressions and um, have a little bit of a play so if nothing else it might be a really good tutorial of how to make um, legs from wire these have been covered in glue um, which makes them nice and solid um, but they, I will show you different ways of how to make legs, including using florist tape as well, or maybe just leaving them wrapped with wool. Um, and um, yeah, it's just it's just a it's just a fun project for spring because we all need a little bit of fun in our lives. Well, I certainly do. So um, if if nothing else, at least I will be enjoying myself. <laughs> I'm sure you all will be. Um, but uh, that's basically the plan. With that right so i'm going to leave you now with your with your painted eggs whatever you have made and um, please do share them and thank you very much for watching and giving us all the thumbs up and the likes um and we see you all next week on um the 9th of march at 1 p.m to make a standing chicken bye